there, it's Kathy Keats and Melissa Hines from the Institute for Pelvic Health. And you're watching Demystifying the Pelvic Floor, weekly videos providing real and simplified pelvic floor education for your real clinical situation. We've got you covered. So for assessment, we diagnose her with pelvic and perineal pain, which is R10.2 and dyspareunia N94.1. Many insurance companies will not reimburse for this ICD-10 code. Um, so we generally do pelvic and perineal pain along with um, M62.838 for muscle spasm. And wouldn't you say, uh, Melissa, that we could have a whole nother course on why? Yes. <laughs> on why insurance companies won't, a lot of times won't accept this for Crazy. Like, totally, totally. <laughs> um, and then the main diagnosis here is it's just some hypertonicity of the pelvic floor muscles caused by imbalances in the external pelvis and internal and so, Melissa, if we had time in our visit, and I'm going to go back up to look at her external pelvic alignment findings, what would be like your one, if you had a two minutes and looking at her pelvic external findings, what would be, what would you suggest that we try as a hands on technique? Yeah. So if we go to the next, slide I think we do we put it um, so here we kind of list all of the um, stretches and things that we would recommend but we would definitely because of the, the pelvic upslip on the left you would want to try the QL release first to really balance out the pelvic pelvis and make um, everything in that good optimal alignment so starting externally, the left QL release, which we went over, you would do that for about like 90 minutes to two minutes to really get a good release. And then you would teach your patient about how to do this stretch at home. And generally they would do it every day for a couple of weeks because it's all cumulative. So every each day, um, they may go out of that alignment, but once you continue to stretch it and get good releases, then it should stay. Um, so that is kind of the number one. Then you could check, you, you checked abdominally, you could give them the small ball into the abdomen for two to three minutes per day. That's a great um, release for someone with dyspareunia. You can have them focus on deep breathing during this, and that will just get really good blood flow and break up any of the restriction, which will then help the pelvic floor muscles relax because those pelvic floor muscles attach to the posterior pubic bone, and then the rectus abdominis also attaches to the pubic bone. So fascially and musculoskeletally, they're very interconnected. And also, like we talked about, deep breathing is like the number one best thing that you can do for your patients and educate them on. And if they have a lot of tightness in their abdominal cavity, they're not going to be able to take that really deep breath that they need to relax the pelvic floor. So often having them do that small ball release prior to deep breathing can be so great because it will release the area a bit, get blood flow, and then you can do that nice deep breathing, which we recommend 10 repetitions about three times per day lying on your back to promote the pelvic floor relaxation. Um, we also have on here the supported squat against the wall, which is great to do daily two to three minutes again focusing on breathing into the pelvic floor really feeling those sit bones widen feeling the um that whole all that vaginal tissue kind of release down towards your feet on the inhale and then kathy will talk through the moisturizing routine which is also very important for this patient to really promote good blood flow and happy muscles and Melissa, I love what you said about the cumulative effect, right? And I think that's an important thing to, that we educate our patients that, you know, these muscles, like first we have to thank these muscles and for, you know, this woman had two vaginal deliveries. 
she hasn't had pain with sex for quite a long time. It's only in the past eight months. And so, and she doesn't really have a lot of urinary or bowel complaints. So we always want to start with like all of the wonderful things that your pelvic floor muscles and your pelvis have done for you over your lifetime. And so now we're just embarking on this sort of re-education to just get everything to be more aligned so that then the inside muscles don't have to overwork and can function a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And so part of that, as Melissa said, is that the muscles and the tissues of the vulva, the vagina, and those pelvic floor muscles need to be moisturized in order to perform the best that they can for optimal functioning. And so just to review, um, moisturizing is different than lubrication. And when we talk about moisturizing, we want to moisturize outside, ideally daily, applying from clitoris to anus, probably after they get out of the shower is a nice time to do that. And you can see our recommended um, products on the patient handout section. And then we want to have a really good intravaginal or internal moisturizing routine. And it does really help to just go over this. And like if you, when you're having your patient come back, the next time they come back, if they're coming back like every two weeks, I, we always go over it, at least in the beginning till you really feel like it's a well-established routine. And we always say like, just like you moisturize your skin, you have to moisturize both the outside and the inside when it comes to the vulva and the vagina. Mm -hmm. And then liberal use of and proper application of lubricant for penetrative sex activities. Um, Melissa, wouldn't you say that the number of people that don't know that they need to put lubricant inside of themselves is mm -hmm. a lot higher than I would have thought. So I think, you know, even if someone's like, I'm already doing that, great. but just yeah. include it, include it in your patient education plan. Yeah. And then always make sure, check in that there's no chemicals and concern in anything that they're using. And then, you know, patients love to see their NPs and their midwives. And so have them come back. Like they trust us. So have them come back, do that whole entire assessment again. And you can always consider a referral to pelvic floor therapy, or you may feel comfortable that you have enough tools in your toolbox now that maybe you do another QL release hands-on technique. Maybe you do an abdominal release. Um, you know, maybe you look at the pelvic alignment section that we have in the course and you're like, I'm gonna try this. Maybe you decide you're gonna try an obturator internus release. You know, you have a lot of things. Um, so just, you know, give it a try and you've, you've got the knowledge now. And as you practice, your patients will be so grateful and you're going to get so much more comfortable and you're really going to be able to help so many more of your patients. And I think too, lastly, like this is something that even though she's been having these symptoms for the past eight months with any pelvic floor issue, you have to remember that it's not just the eight months because they're internal muscles. Generally, we don't feel them until there's a dysfunction, but usually it takes quite a bit of time for those muscles to get dysfunctional. So a reminder to yourself and to your patient that this can take time to resolve and it's not going to get better just from like two or three visits of, you know, QL release and some trigger point release with dilator therapy. It will take time, but it will get better. So just always reminding your patient too, that there is hope and things to do. And there's just not one quick fix, which a lot of our patients come to us thinking, oh gosh, I'm not going to get better after like one visit or two visits. This right. is going to take me more like, you know, six to eight visits or more. Um, so that's, that's important too, because patients are wanting that quick fix a lot. Thank you. Melissa. And that's a wrap. Did you like this video? If so, hit like, and subscribe, please share with your colleagues and comment and let us know your biggest challenges in taking care of patients with pelvic floor dysfunction. 
and subscribe to our email list at instituteforpelvichealth.com to get your free guide, Four Tips for Managing Your Challenging Pelvic Exam. You'll get access to our weekly pelvic health content. And be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, where we'll post more pelvic health tips. And we're thrilled to announce that we launched Beyond the Kegel, the only interdisciplinary AANP accredited online course for NPs and CNMs. Beyond the Kegel is six modules packed with practical information that you most likely didn't get in your training. Plus, you'll get our digital clinician resource finder that includes templates, patient education handouts in English and Spanish, hands-on demos, everything you need to confidently help your patients with pelvic floor dysfunction. By simplifying the pelvic floor, we'll improve patient outcomes and your provider experience. Thanks for watching and spreading the word. Now let's revolutionize pelvic health. We'll see you soon. <laughs>